Uh, so 15 years ago when uh, Gordon Highlander first started, uh, industrial TIs were kind of like the uh, stepchild of the industry. We had five color selections. We had a, a 2,000 square foot office space and there was no glitz or glamour to the, to the projects. Fast forward to 2022, we are seeing the majority of projects uh, have a portion of corporate office integrated into the industrial space, as well as a lot of manufacturing facilities incorporating their distribution center, manufacturing facility and corporate office into one facility. From talking to our clients, a lot of what we're seeing is you've always had historically in business, you've had the executives over here and you've had all of the operational folks over here. And what they're doing is with the with technology, everybody's getting closer together. They want to be able to be with the manufacturing. They want to be with their people. Look at office high-rise buildings. You're adding in collaborative spaces where everybody is open and working together. And a lot of that is going into these uh, manufacturing and industrial spaces as well, to where they're trying to think about their people first and not necessarily their executives first. And that's showing through a lot where we're seeing amenities in the spaces as well, where 25 years ago an amenity in an industrial space was you had an office and a warehouse restroom. Now you're seeing mother's rooms, we're seeing childcare centers inside of industrial spaces to help accommodate the employees who are really at work more than they're at their homes to make it really a second home for them. Say five, 10 years ago, we weren't as concerned with the look, the texture of the finishes and the feel of the finishes that designers would be looking for. We're trying to get them in to be functional and we're having to take a turn to where we're having to try to meet budget, functionality, corporate look and feel all in one. You, tr you have to do that uh, tread lightly to make sure you're not crossing any lines to where what is the must have and what is, what is a, a corporate mandate for a lack of better terms for a uh, for a tenant uh, and for a client to have is the look of their space and they also asking the right questions of what is a wish and what is a must have and identifying what those two are i think collaboration is the key word uh, we try to get involved even if they're a new architect we don't know them we want to be their partner through the job we're not there to cause friction in the project so by the end of the project, they might be another architect that we use on future projects. So we try to team up, collaborate with them and do what we like, what we call design assist, where we can help integrate the budget with the design and have at the end a budget minded result that everybody can, everybody is happy with. We have more projects in the history of the company currently going on that we are involved in the architectural design the front end design, getting with the city, making sure that the zoning matches with what the, 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 the client's requirements are gonna be, checking with the utility company, make sure the utilities are available there to get the project jump started a little sooner. And it's also helping take a little bit of the market compression off of the construction managers when they're doing a fully designed engin uh, engineered bid package, they're doing all that in a vacuum prior to engaging a contractor. When we went down to Austin, we tried to, uh, the first job we did, we, we expressed how we do it up here in Dallas with our mechanical, electrical, and plumbing being designed, build, and we got looked at like we were a little crazy, like who does that? That's not, that's not how it's done. One of the first projects that we did down there where time was a critical, time and budget were a critical factor, the architects said, all right, here's our, here's our quote to do the MEP design they're three months out so we in turn we went to our subcontractors and we're like so what can we do can we do this design build and our subcontractors say well that's already included in our number we can have it done in two weeks so we're able to expedite the project and then work with the architect on making sure any finishes that need to be integrated into their work into their design gets integrated into the engineered plans some of them had a little disbelief that that's how it's done um, but We've opened some eyes down there to that, uh, of doing it that way on these projects. And there's certain projects where it warrants it, and there's certain projects that do warrant it being fully engineered. Uh, but just trying to talk through the risk and mitigate the risk of, of both sides of that 
And most of the time they're seeing where, when we're seeing the risk is at the right level to go that route, that they're, they follow along with it because of the time saving aspect of it.